Hello folks, Edward Reardon here, and I am going to present a series of sessions that I did. Looks like I started it on New Year's Eve, a couple of months ago. This is a target that I worked with my buddy Dustin Newcomb. He selected the target, put it together for me. I was, of course, completely blind to the target. This was the target ID that he set up for me on the 27th. All I got was the target ID here. He sent this to me via text. This clip here I got when he sent me the feedback. The target was the Xenon 1 detector. Perceive, describe, and draw in detail the construction Xenon 1T detector, its operations from 2016 to 18 when it was active, and the theoretical or the theorized dark matter energetics in this experiment that the detector is built to record. Okay, that sounds pretty heavy, man. Heavy. All right. This is the detector here. It exists here. This is a mountain range in Italy. They are, I think, 4,500 feet below or something like that. And they have their facility built under the mountain here. And the reason they did that is because they're using the shield of the, of the rock, the solid rock, to uh, detract radiation and all kinds of other noisy energy and particles from hitting the detector down here below the mountain. So this is the detector here right here. This is where, you know, all the computers or whatever. This is a giant tank. This is filled with ultra purified water. In the middle here is the xenon detector. I can get a shot of that here. Inside this is Z xenon that is partially liquid and at the top it is in gas form. And the reason they use this is because it has very low, if I can remember correctly, I'm not a scientist, so I'm, I'm trying to keep my uh, descriptions here right. But the xenon is a, is a very pure element that um, has very low radiation noise when it's in its pure form, like, like the, the purified water. All of these things along with under the mountain range is to keep this area here as free of radiation and other strange, you know, just random particles or whatever, so that this device can detect possibly dark energy and if not dark energy then to detect weakly interacting massive particles which dark matter is a candidate this is a hype our hypothetical particles that are one of the proposed candidates for dark matter so weakly interacting massive particles one of those could be dark matter. This device is designed to, to record interactions with those. And how it does that, again, I'm going to give you my description of it here, from how, I've, how I understand it after doing my research. 
is that inside of the device here, this thing, with the xenon, it's liquid on the, on the bottom section and it's gas in gas form at the top. What they set this thing up to do is that if one of these weakly interacting particles hits either the nucleus of the xenon or one of its electrons, it will create an effect where those electrons, I, th I think, and don't quote me on, on that, but they illuminate. They light up when they get hit with one of these weakly interacting massive particles. Once it does that, it, the it excited electrons float up into the gas range of the detector where they have it set up uh, where it can basically create a 3D model of where and when that weakly interacting particle made contact with one of the xenon elements so that they can study it and see what it was. And from what I heard or read, once the study was over, that the, the device had detected more than they had anticipated. Now, uh, did they detect dark matter, which is theoretical, or did they detect uh, some other form of weakly interacting mass particle? That, I guess, is what we're, we're still waiting. Uh, they said it could take a couple of years for them to really try to f understand what, uh, what they detected. Here's their website, xenon1t.org. And again, they're, they're kind of showing what I just described there of just like a basic idea of how the, the experiment works. Here they wrote in September of 2021 that it, once they started looking at some of the results, um, they, they, they found stuff. They found something. They, they think it might be dark energy. Not dark matter, but dark energy. Some unexplained, let me read this real quick. Some unexplained results from the Xenon 1 dark matter detector, a 1300 uh, kilogram vat of super pure liquid Xenon shielded from cosmic rays in a cryostat submerged in water deep 1.5 kilometers beneath the Grand Sasso Mountains of Italy may have, have been, may have been caused, oh, may have been caused by dark energy particles produced by a region of the sun with strong magnetic fields and not the dark matter the experiment was designed to detect according to a physicist from the Xenon collaboration. So they're thinking they may have detected dark energy because dark matter is theoretical and some people think it's a, a wrong theory um, and that it has more to do with gravity and stuff like that. And a lot of that stuff comes up in my session here. So let me start going through this. Now that I've given a brief, uneducated description of the Xenon 1T detector, let's see where I went here. So the first, my first visit is I'm inside this place here. Two people, at least two. It feels like an office or a workplace, and these people are inside of it. So I'm, I'm inside of a workplace. It feels communal. The people, they're talking. They're inside. There are things and objects inside as well. But what are they talking about, though, I wonder? Like a work-related conversation. Then what is important about this place, though, I wonder? If, there, if it's a workplace, what's important? What kind of work? There is a sense of industry here. The timeline uh, does feel modern. So I felt like I was in, I'm in the, the now, in the modern time. But what kind of an industry is it, I wonder? It feels technological, along with manufacturing. It's reminding me of uh, an Elon Musk factory. But what's important, though, I wonder? A preparation feel. But for what, I wonder? It does give me the notion of a takeoff or a launch, an event. 
the feeling of an event, one that is yet to come, at least for them. A feeling of hard work paying off. But what is the nature of the event, though, I want to see? Now, as I'm going along in this, I want to keep in mind that for the tasking here, uh, per the tasking, I was looking for the ranges uh, between 2016 and 2018. So right here, uh, I'm at the be my assessment of my session is that I'm at the beginning of when they were going to begin these these experiments. Since the tasking did um, put that time frame in there, what is the nature of the event that I wanted? It still feels like the launch of something, the beginning of something, like a ride. A roller coaster ride, a high energy event, and they are preparing, they are anticipating, and an aesthetic was that there was some anxiety about it. And here were these people in there, they're a large screen, they're watching something, uh, they're watching something on the screen. It reminds me of a government or a military facility. Here's a map of the world on the screen, and these people are here, they're looking at it. They are watching something. They are prepared. Feels very precise and strategic. But what's the event, though, I wonder? I want to get into the event. I want to feel it. And I want to understand it. How do other people feel about it? I, I wonder. I, wanted to, I had to get myself in, inside of this feeling and inside of this understanding. So I wanted to do that via someone involved, someone who knows about it, feels like a, a heat or an energy source. This is the person's experience of it. So this is the person that I went to explore. The event feels like this, an emanating ball of energy. And I'm thinking it's that. This again being when a, a weakly interacting particle theorized to be dark matter or dark energy or some other unknown hits one of the xenon uh, particles and an illumination effect take, takes place. But what is this? What is happening? I ponder. Is this some kind of tachyon thing? I know, generic term for me. But what does that mean, I wonder? A bridge? What does that even mean? A Rosen bridge? As a generic term, a quantum event. Explore a quantum event was my movement to myself. An energy source or something that is emanating energy, like a ball of light. It feels controlled, or I could also say not out of control, meaning that it didn't feel like a nuclear explosion. It was something more not out of control, like in a laboratory or facility in which it is staying. Uh, the facility here, again, uh, where do I have my images here? The facility. Here's this person I was perceiving, and here's the experiment here. This part feels like it, it is in control, like being able to move an energy source, or even remote control. It makes me think of an energy orb being moved remotely, like what would be thought of as a UFO, a floating orb, a controlled and or manipulated source of energy. But used for what though, I wonder? Power source, I wonder? Power from what? I, again, I wonder, phosphor? Like a gas cloud, like a gas cloud. And again, let me get my images here. This is the xenon gas right here. Moving into it is like entering a luminous gas cloud and then a solid. 
my gas cloud and then the solid here. This is what I was perceiving. Inside of this gas cloud, there was a solid object in there. This feels box-shaped, like there's a compartment inside. It's not easy to draw, it's not even easy to conceptualize, and it, and it wasn't. It was very difficult for me to even get to this point. But it was like being inside of this thing. Inside of this. Not an easy, not an easy place to go, even as a remote viewer. The inside of something surrounded in this energy or gas cloud here. What is this, though, I wonder? What's going on here? The word tachyon keeps popping up in my mind. Again, I think that's a, that's a hypothesized uh, particle, too. Could be a generic descriptor of some fusion type of energy, meaning that the word tachyon keeps popping up in my mind, but that could be and is my generic descriptor uh, of some fusion type of energy. It feels controlled, though. Again, I have the idea of a remote-controlled object that gets confused with a UFO. I think I was getting, I was keeping that out of my mind because I'm dealing with exotic energies here. This can move around, be controlled. Well, it is being controlled in here. Like this. Even though they are allowing the elements to interact. Inside of this thing, as where I said myself, reminds me of, of a fusion reactor with some solids in there like lead or something. A very solid structural base with some charge moving from it here. But used for what, though, I wonder? Moving back and forth like it is weaving something or working a pattern. That's interesting. It is working a pattern as it is being detected in its X and Y here. But what pattern, though, I wonder? A newly discovered pattern? How things move, how things rotate, how they orbit, all, all true. The pattern, something mean, something moves in the pat. oh no, no. The pattern, something moves in. It's almost like finding symbols in the, or a energy pattern or sequence. But what is it for though, I wonder? And how is it useful? The sequence slash pattern is useful, but how? It becomes how to recognize something. But what, I wonder? A recognizable pattern, like something on a defined route or path, like through here, running a pattern. What for, though, I wonder, and why? It's like setting up something, running that route, that route or sequence, pre-planning, mapping it out. Sequencing. What does that even mean, though, I wonder? Trial runs. Getting it sequenced correctly, which they absolutely have to do here. But what for? That quest question brings me to the event aspect. If it is an event, it is pre-planned and trial run. Like the military will run drills over and over. Like that. But what is the event, though, I wonder? There is something turning in the center of the illuminated gas. An element. This is undulating and turning. This is the gas here. This was very intense to look at. Oh, my mouse just went out on me. Hang on. My mouse just went waggy on me. That's what happens when I deal with these particles. Well,
it's this was very intense to look at. I'm not surprised. As soon as I got to this, I started having technical problems. Okay, here's what happened with this. I wanted to get to this point here in the session. And I was, I wanted to look into, let me get back here. Into this. And it was not easy to do. It was not easy to do. There was, this was very, very intense. And so as I'm in the session here, it took a lot of effort for me to actually perceive this thing. And, and I drew it exactly as I saw it. For me, what I'm looking at is a weakly interacting massive particle right here. And I saw it, perceived it, and I drew it exactly as I saw it, just like that. That's it. This is this is what they are looking for inside of the gas chamber here, the xenon gas chamber. So I'm right. I'm right on target. I'm right on target. This this may be. This may be the first time. One of these has been seen, right here. Very intense to look at. Reminds me of the center of a reactor or reaction. Very charged, very energetic, almost boiling or radioactive. Radioactive. But what is this all about, though, I wonder? Reaction. But for what? What kind of reaction? And why am I seeing this? It's like watching something being turned on. There is something here that feels rather intimate. It feels intimate. Like seeing something exposed. Like you are watching it. And it is aware of you watching it. And it feels exposed and trapped. This was an aesthetic impact. That's my interpretation of a quote-unquote emotion from something else. Meaning that if this this is this is what was happening here was that inside of this detector this thing here when a weakly interacting massive particle makes it through, hits one of the xenon particles, creates the illumination that is then de detected and recorded. It is the detection and the recording of it that I'm trying to, that I'm experiencing. I'm having, I'm having an aesthetic about that, it's something that has never been seen never observed and now it's observed and that is the aesthetic that I had about that observation like something intimate like that this reminds me of the rings of Saturn or a debris field moving around a center reactive Two layers of the reactive. So I'm saying there's two layers of the reactive. There is the center part that energetically reminds me of a reactor. Energy source, like what a nuclear controlled chain reaction, like what is a, a nu nuclear controlled chain reaction. Then there is the part in which as it is being observed. In its raw state, it is reacting to being observed. This is meaning this, that. And what does that mean? It could be along the lines of like the double, double slit experiment where 
um, because it has been detected, maybe it's going to have a reaction, or it could be reacting to me. It could be reacting to me, observing it in its raw state. So Dustin and I even talked about this, that, that we had to wonder if in the session, um, if, I, if I had interacted with that weakly interacting mass of particle and had a, that had an effect on the detector, that, that is something to, to take into consideration. And we both ponder that. We had, we had a kind of you know, laugh about it nervously, uh, but it is possible. It is possible. Uh, this reminds me of the particle-to-wave experiment. This is what I just talked about. This raw energy is reacting to observation. But how is this possible, though, I wonder? The participants could, could be linked to the energy source technologically. This could or would trigger a response. Okay, response. What is this, I wonder? This is human-to-matter connection. Matter reacts to the human. That is the manipulation element, meaning matter is reacting. Then the human observes and or to manipulate a controlled response. It's very high level tech for here, for here. What is the purpose of all of this though, I wonder? Controlled matter. The goal is to have matter controlled by the mind and or will of the individual. This has been a long-term goal. A collaboration is the fulfillment of that goal. Mind controlling matter. The modern philosopher's stone. Meaning that if the weakly interacting particle, weakly interacting massive particle, be it dark energy, dark matter, uh, or any, any whatever it ends up being, is it something that can be controlled? And is that part of their intention in the experiments? Then what will be done with this, though, I wonder? From an evolutionary perspective, it is a reduction of the physical body due to lack of need and necessity, meaning the body isn't needed or required in the way it was during the building eras. In this era, the human has rigorously worked to design and build a reservoir for the mind. But why, though, I wonder? To store it. Is it just a memory at that point, though? If you store it, isn't it just a memory? Without an energy source, it is. The energy source is required to make new memories. So the mind is still active and observing and reacting. There are multiple objects here. The weakly interacting massive particle and the detector. Reaction and or two observation. But well, what next of all other? I want to describe something new. I do. But what is it? How something works? How what works though, I wonder? What is its principle? The hundredth monkey notion. What is great? I question. Massive, like massive particle. Monumental. Disparaging. Existential. Influential. Memorable, a memory, the creation of a new memory, the formulation and execution of an event or events with the sole purpose to create a new memory reaction. New memory is being created and stored for the purpose of being stored, like a memory machine. It can be looked at or compared to the notion of mass and micro manipulations, a type of puppet master relationship. 
But that notion is not new. What is new, I wonder? Constantly adding to the database, to the record, like film capturing moments, continually. But why and for who, I wonder? The idea of always keep records reminds me of Mars. You never know. When you are advancing, fulfilling possibilities and probabilities, when you are advancing, it is highly advised to document everything so as not to have to start over. If one falls, the blueprint of the progress to that point is available. It feels like the attempts to climb out of something. But what do I want it? Like this here. If this experiment were to stop, all of that, and, not, and, and the data lost, all of that progress would have to start over. It would be horrible. They, that's a lot of work they did there. Feels like the attempt to climb out of something, but, but what? Is it just the confines of being human, I wonder? Continually reaching further. Is this due to our own nature as it relates to the expansion force of the universe? And actually, let me... I forgot that I wrote that. Because... To detect dark energy, scientists generally look for gravitational interactions the way gravity pulls objects around. And on the largest scales, the gravitational effect of dark energy is repulsive, pulling, pulling things away from each other and making the universe's expansion accelerate. Accelerate. Is this due to our own nature as it relates to the expansion force of the universe? I was right in there. Meaning, if the universe was contracting, would humanity be moved by such creative energy? With the amount of... Let me read that again. If the universe was contracting, would humanity be moved by such creative energy? I Meaning, would we? How would we react to it? With the amount of creative force we are experiencing, I say it is true that the universe is expanding. We are expressing that. It's interesting because I'm in the weakly interacting massive particle that could be described or called dark energy. And I am experiencing the expansion force of the universe. The fear of contraction seems to be the manipulating force that is guiding the speed and or amount of expansions, like the governor. Does that mean if we did not have the manipulating force of fear, we could expand too quickly? That's a theoretical or a philosophical perspective. It is the harnessing of force, the chariot, the chariot, controlled expansion and I drew started drawing the chariot there controlled expansion that was the first session for the xenon 1t detector
and this inside of this gas here is in my experience I saw a weakly interacting massive particle and quite possibly in my observation of it um, may have had an effect on it and it, and it had effect, an effect on me as well Alright, that's that's session one. That is session one. Stay tuned.